Introduction to Computer Science, Lesson 1, Lab 1. In this lab, we will discuss course folder setup. We'll learn how to use Code Sculptor 3, and we will write our first Python program. Let's begin by opening Google Chrome. First thing, make sure that you are logged in on your school account. Go to the little icon up in the upper right hand corner of the address bar and click your account. Make sure that you're logged into your school account. Once you're logged in, let's go to py3.codesculptor.org or else click in the, on the link in the lesson. You should open up to this page. One of the things that we want to do for the class is to create a folder that we're going to save our work in. And we're going to put that folder here and underneath the address bar you should have a shortcuts, favorites, uh, bookmarks bar. So if you don't have it, and I don't have it on my screen right here, so I'm going to go to the three little dots next to my icon profile, click the three dots, go to bookmarks, and click on show bookmarks bar. Now I have a bookmark bar. So I want to add a folder for this course. So any place on that bookmark, bookmark bar, I'm going to right click with the right mouse button, go to add folder, and let's name this folder Intro to CS, or Intro to Computer Science. Click Save. Now you won't see it here because it's going to be down at the bottom of the list. So let's go get it. Go all the way to the right to the two little chevrons. Click on those and go down to the folder that you just created. And just drag it up here right underneath the address bar at the very top. That way you can use it. So as you may notice here, Code Sculptor has um, three areas to be aware of. The first one is the series of buttons or this menu buttons on the left hand side. In the middle here, this is the uh, code area or the editor where you're going to be writing a lot of code. And on the right is the output area or output screen. Um, Let's, when Code Sculptor opens up, it opens up with this program. If we run it, it actually opens in a separate window. Um, if I click on Click Me, it changes the words inside the window. That's what the program does. This is just uh, 26 lines of code. Notice as I hold my cursor over the buttons that some of them are not available. Uh, all of them have a tool tip when you hold your cursor over them that show what the button does. If we want to run the program, we run it with that button. If I leave that window open, I can click the reset button and it will close the window for me. The reset button stops the program and clears the output to the output screen. Let's take and delete all of this text by highlighting it. Hit the backspace key or the delete key after you've highlighted it. And now we have a blank screen. So let's save this blank screen so that every time we want to, we can go to Code Sculptor and get our own um, blank slate, so to speak, so that we can begin coding. Now you'll notice up here in the address bar, we're just at codesculptor.org. Well, if I click the Save button, it's going to give me a URL, a new URL. I click Save, and now it's appended the URL, and it's given me a fresh URL. Let's take this URL and drag it straight down into our Code Sculptor folder. If you click on the folder, you'll notice it says Code Sculptor 3. So if I were to go um, to some other place, uh, just to show you how this works, we'll go here, go to Code Sculptor, and it opens up 
our blank page that we just saved. That's how you're going to be handing in a lot of homework, by sending me a link that you save. One of the problems, though, is that it always gives it the same name, Code Sculptor 3. So we need to rename our stuff as we go so that it's descriptive and we can remember because if we keep saving some of the programs that we're going to be writing and they're all named Code Sculptor 3, it's not going to do us very good because we'll have to search through them to get it. So I'm going to right click on this, go to edit, and call this Code Sculptor 3 blank page. So this is probably going to be my starting point for the semester, uh, for uh, all the code that I write this semester. If I notice now, it gives me code to code for blank page. So let's write our first program, which is um, the Hello World program. If you've read uh, the lesson, you know the significance of this. It's been used by millions of uh, coders throughout history. What I would like you to do for this class is to put your name Remember, if I start going too fast for you and you're watching this video, uh, just pause it. And um, I want your name, the name of this class, and the date. Begin these lines with the uh, hash mark or the pound sign. And as you remember, if you did the lesson, that that signifies that this is a comment. Comments are not seen by the um, by the program. Uh, they won't appear in the output screen. They're visible to people reading your code, like other programmers and yourself. Um, you might also put an explanation of what your code is. And I'm going to require that at some point as we get more complicated, but not right now. But I'm just going to put my first program. And uh, if you read the lesson, you know that this is the, the print function is what we're going to use. And this is the print function. We're going to put a string in it. And the string is... Hello world. Okay, so that's our first program. We have a function, and functions require these two parentheses. Inside we put a string, hello world, and the strings requires the, uh, the uh, quotation marks. They can be uh, single quotation marks or double quotation marks, but they must begin and end with the same type. If we run our program, we see that we have hello world. So now, if you remember what I just, uh, what we just did here, that this is a link we just created for our blank page. But now I want you to submit this as an assignment. So the first thing that we need to do is get a new URL. So I, if you look at the number that you have up here, when I click new URL, it's going to give me a totally different URL. So now I'm going to take that URL, drop it in my folder, and now I see a blank page and I have my next one. So I'm going to right click on it, edit, and hello world, my hello world program. I click save. Now if I'm off doing something else and I want to go to work, let's see what I've done here. Not my blank page, I want to go to my hello world. And there it is. So let's say that I am writing this program hello world and I want to add another hello world to it. and I want it to say hello world twice. I run my program, it says hello world twice. Now, this is kind of my same program, I'm just kind of working on it. So, I don't really want to get a new URL, but I want to save it. 
So if you look at this number up here, it ends in mm6.py. I'm going to click Save. And it appends that number, mm6, with the underscore zero. Okay. And let's say I want to continue working on it. Control, copy. I want to print Hello World three times. I run my program. It works. So now I'm going to save this again. Notice up here it changed that zero to a one. It's appending it. So let's say I go away. And now I go back in here and I go to Hello World. And, hmm, this, huh, I have three, remember, and I saved it, but I didn't save the bookmark. But I can go to this version of it by just putting that zero should give me the one that had one extra hello world, and the other one was an underscore one. I can just keep going up. If I don't have anything after the series of numbers, I'll go underscore zero, then underscore one, underscore two, and I can find the versions of the program that I was working on. Now I could put, I could have bookmarked all of these. I could have, but it would be hello world one, hello world two, hello world three. It's easier for me just to bookmark it once and then go to a version, unless I have done this 10 or 20 times and I have a final version that I like, I would bookmark that one. So we've learned these three buttons. Um, the download button is not available right now and I'm not quite sure why, but if I were to click on the download button, it would open up this kind of screen and would allow me to go to, uh, would allow me to save my um, program as a .py um, file, which is Python. If I, I'm going to load this right now because I didn't actually click the download button, I clicked the load button. And load means I can load a program into Python off my computer. So I'm going to load room area, click open, and it gives me this program called room room area that we'll be doing a little bit later in the uh, in the course so let's go back here to our blank screen now I've given you a couple of homework assignments and we learned a little bit about what ASCII means and one of the things in the assignment that I asked was for you to possibly do a little ASCII caricature and that means ASCII using the keyboard characters that you have available, nothing fancy here, and using a print statement um, and the print statement is let's see here, the print statement is and I want your name uh, course and date So let's start out with print, and I'm just going to put my marks in here so that I can type in the middle. Now when I click print like this and I click run it, there's nothing here, but if I put something in there, it will print. I put A and it printed A. So what I want to do is I want to make something with ASCII, and I'm going to try here. I want you to try both ways, and that is to put it on multiple lines and to put it on um, one line. I'm going to try one line first, and I'm going to use some escape characters, and I'm going to start by, let's reset this so I get a blank screen, and I'm going to go, the first one I'm going to use, if you did the lesson, you know that this is the escape character for tab. So when I print this, it's going to put a tab. For instance, if I put an A and then another A after that, when I run this, the A should be eight spaces apart because I believe a tab is eight spaces. Notice that they're eight spaces apart. OK. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my face or whatever I'm doing here. And I'm just going to do something simple. I'm going to try to do a very simple kind of happy face. And I'm not sure if I can do this, so we're going to all find this out together. So I'm going to put a tab, and then I'm going to put a underscore, and then I'm going to put a new line, and then a tab again. Actually, you know something? This one won't get a tab. So yeah, let's do it. let's do a tab again, a tab again, and let me go back here and under under my before my tab I'm going to put a space and another space. I'm trying to think ahead here, and then I got a new line, a tab, and a single space, and a forward slash, and a space, space, and a backslash, and I think I need two backslashes here because it, it's an escape character, and then a backslash again, and a new line, and a tab, and a um, parentheses and let's see here a parentheses a zero a space a zero another parentheses and a new line and let's see here we're on our third line you know something I'm going to have to take a look at it here so let's run it Okay, I'm getting close, so it is kind of what I wanted. So I want to go down to my, I'm on a new line now, and so my new line is again going to get a tab, start with the tab, and I believe I need this time one space, and the, this character, and uh, let's see, underscore again maybe and then the you know what and I think I need two of these characters because it's in it requires an escape okay and then a new line new line and what are we doing what are we doing here let's run it and see what we got so far. Okay, well, you know what? I don't know that that really is coming out very well, but you know something, we'll give this a uh, demon or whatever the heck it is here. It looks like I gotta take a space out here and I'm gonna give it a crazy little chin on the next line. So let's go and I'm at a new line, and we're going to go another tab. And then there's a character, I think, that, oh, it's, an, it's a wrong kind of character. So we'll just use a, a, a little U. How about a capital U? And let's see, I think I've got to get two spaces in there. Let's run it. And there it is. So, and this is all on one line, all using ASCII characters. Well. The assignment was for you to uh, draw uh, something, a little character, maybe a little animal, uh, an emoji, something of that nature. And I want you to do it using multiple lines. In other words, I would have print, a bunch of spaces, and have this character, and then go to a new line and use print again, and then use print again, and print again. So you would have five or six print statements. And then I want you to attempt to do something like this, where you put it all on one line by using escape characters for tabs, two lines, and for your slashes and whatever else you need them for. And uh, remember that when you're doing this stuff, 
Um, when you have an assignment like this with your name, your course, and the date, don't forget to get a new URL. And once you've got your new URL, save it in your course folder and send me the link. Now in this lesson we have created our folder for this class. We learned a little bit about Code Sculptor 3 and how to use it and we wrote our first program. Now remember um, that if you want to be a programmer, the key is do the work. Uh, learning to program involves typing the code. Uh, copying and pasting will not let you learn how to be a programmer. You must type the code on your own. So we'll see you next time. Uh, stay tuned for lesson two.